How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to tackle something that should be a very simple process on the Bronco, and that is changing out the brake pads. Now, this is a 2.7, so the brake system is a little bit different than 2.3, but even if you have the 2.3, it's probably a good idea to do this, especially if you're touching the rear brakes, because the rear brakes are still electronically activated. Um, with the parking brake in the 2.3 and the 2.7, even though the rest of the braking system's a bit different between the two, but uh, this still counts if you're replacing the brake rear brake pads, and that is that you need to put your Bronco into brake maintenance mode. Now, I've never had a car where I've had to put anything into maintenance mode uh, to work on the brakes, but there's so many electronics computers and everything else going on in these new Broncos that, well, you got to tell the computer that, hey, I'm messing with the brakes. Otherwise, it might get confused and be like, hey, that's not where I remember the calipers being. You don't want to confuse the computers because a confused computer will just assume that there's something wrong and start giving you warnings when all you did was change the brake pads. I'm about to go over 30,000 miles on the Bronco. Like, if you look at the pads, they look fine. They've got enough meat left on them and everything. Um, and braking's fine. But I am starting to get a little bit of squeaking, which is really noticeable if I, like, go through a drive through or anything where I'm near a wall and the sound's echoing off the side. So it does squeak a bit. Maybe it's just a little rock somewhere. I don't know. But I figure 30,000 miles isn't bad but i've been running oversized tires since pretty much day one like i have these 37s this bronco originally came with 32s it's a black diamond so uh it is definitely running a lot more unsprung weight than normal so figure it's not a bad idea to go ahead swap out the brakes put some power stops on there these are the z36 with carbon fiber ceramic they're supposed to be like the heavy duty brakes for towing or off-roading or anything like that so i figure might as well go go for those uh, i don't really do much towing with the bronco not that you can because they're not rated to tow a whole lot but i do, definitely do off-roading and it's that time of year again where we're going to start doing a lot more of that so i figure i'll go ahead get these changed out now and not have to worry about it but before you do like i said you have to putting it into brake maintenance mode so to do that you're going to jump in make sure your keys are in the car so you're going to turn the ignition on you want to make sure your parking brake is off press and hold the gas pedal i'm going to press and hold the parking brake and i'm going to turn the ignition off then I'm going to turn the ignition back on. And turn the ignition off one more time. And then let go of both of those. The pedal. And that. And you should see. Brake maintenance mode is on. So now we should be free to go ahead. You probably couldn't hear it, but it sounded like an electric motor was running after i did that sequence you can kind of hear something running which i believe is just the brakes making sure they're fully released so now that that is done the process should be fairly straightforward starting with the back so i got the front shock to be safe i'm going to go ahead get everything jacked up get these wheels off got everything jacked up got the wheel off and we're ready to take the old brake pads out. The first thing we want to do is there's a plug right here. And we're going to want to remove that. I find it easier just to grab a, a flathead and lift up the clip there because that's all it's doing. And you push there. We got lots of dirt, so I'm going to get that. So you need to disconnect that because there's not going to be enough room to move the caliper out of the way. And then next, I got a 13 millimeter and a 19 millimeter 
wrench. Uh, you will need the wrench or something that size. This for the 13 millimeter, you can just use a socket, but I have the wrench, so that's what I'll use. I just gonna use 13 millimeters and loosen these, not tighten And you'll see, once you break it loose, this side starts spinning. And so what the 19 millimeters for is to hold that. And go ahead, take the first bolt out. And then it's going to be the same thing up here. And pull that screw out. And go ahead and grab that flathead that I was using. Kind of get in here. And we want to make sure we're setting this off to the side and set it on top of there. But you want to make sure it's not going to fall and it's not dangling by the brake line. So at first glance, they didn't, like I said, they don't look like they're in bad shape. But these little clips here, pop that off, pop that off. And it should pop out. Now pay attention to how these little clips are on there and how these are. And we'll go ahead and pop these out of here. So the outer has these two screw, two little marks. The inside one has these and it also has this uh, wear indicator on it and then we've got these little clips here which we also have in here and we just want to make sure that we're putting those clips on in the same direction which it's kind of got an indention there and it can only go on one way and then I'm just slide on there and this gets one on each side and it only really fits on there one way, but if you get confused or not sure, you can take a look at the one that you're taking off. And then in our little bag, give us new ones of these clips. And these also can only really fit in one way. So one side's got the opening that fits over this hump here. Of course, now that I'm doing it on the camera, it doesn't want to sit in there, but should give you a hard time. There we go. And then just snap down in there. Like I said, that, should, that can really only go in there one way because it's got this cutout that goes over this hump where this side's just flat. Do the same thing on the top side here. During this time, check your rotors, make sure everything's good, get them turned or replace them. If needed, compare the thickness between that one and that one. You can see the difference between the OEM brakes and the power stop brake. I don't know why the OEMs are cut off and it's got that sharp edge where these kind of have that gradual edge. But yeah, I mean, you can see the difference between the brand new power stop and 30,000 mile OEM ones. Uh, they weren't in desperate need of being changed, but they were starting to get close. When these go back in, just kind of rotate, and you're going to push this clip onto there, and then push down on it. Kind of have to like put it in at an angle so you could push down and rotate it in and then it rests on there these clips if everything is behaving we'll just kind of clip on there and so there you go and that's it sits in 
with these springs keeps it tense and then you have this tension which goes back and forth one thing I didn't do before I stuck that pad in was add some of the brake grease inside of there but now we do the same thing with the pad on the back side I'm just gonna pop out and the back sides works just exactly like the front side did now interestingly Okay, that, I was going to say there was no bottom hook on there, but it just came out with the pad. Now that was in there good. I already did the other side, and when I did the other side, these clips on the back were broken. Which could have been part of where I was getting the squeak from, where it wasn't backing off. But, said, and it also probably doesn't help that. The groove in here is packed full of dirt and who knows what else. So that could also be leading to issues. Just like the front, these clips are going to get inserted. There's really only one way that they fit. This time I'll remember put a little bit of brake grease in there. It's just a thin layer. And the rear brake pads are going to have the three dots there, like I said, and it's got the wear indicator. But we also have to install the small clips, just like the front. And just like the front, I'm going to kind of angle it so you can push down on those clips and then get that. All right, so got the caliper cleaned up. It's ready to go back on there, but... We got a lot more brake pad in there than we did, so we're going to have to close that up a bit. Now, there's specialized tools made just for this. I found these clamps work just as well. Just squeeze, let it go in. Her should be ready to go back on. Slides on. Get these holes lined up. I'm not 100% sure what the torque for these are, so I'll look those up and I'll let you know. Yeah, we'll just make sure that those are torqued down. And that's it for the back. Oh, and also important. Make sure that you uh, reconnect this. Make sure it clicked in there. All right, now on to the front. So here we are at the front. Now the front is more of the style caliper I'm used to working with. And you see, brake pads are significantly bigger. Uh, even the bolts are bigger on the front. So these are 15s. The ones on the back were 13. And then this nut on the inside is also bigger. This is a 13 16ths, which 
pits on there. I don't know what that is in metric, but I know bigger than 19, which is what I have in metric wrenches. And then here in the front, I don't have the axle that I can just rest that on without worrying about it falling. So I'm just going to grab this. Air caliper. Just let it hang there. There's no intention on that. Hose. And then the front should come off similar to the back. And it doesn't have the the wider clips, it just has these clips. And again, these pads don't look bad. Do have a bunch of junk in there. And I got some chips missing from the brake material. <laughs> so just like the front one on there, it's got the four little stamps. It's got the four stamps on there. This one does as well. So it seems like we have even, which is unusual, we have less wear on the front brakes than we did on the back, it seems. All right, and so actually there is a difference between the top clip, top clip is just like the rear ones, and the bottom clip has an extra little spring on there. So make sure we're replacing it with the correct one. And it looks like same, the clips really can only go on there one way. So, and we will yeah, say so you, you push them in feed the end the tips feed like the tips of those springs into the top and push and rotate and it should slide in there all right and then on the back side should be more of the same yeah, uh, and again, and there's some wear. You tell the difference, but not nearly as much wear as there was on the back back pads. But we'll go ahead and get them all changed out. And then these should slap in just the same way. There we go. And on the front, we actually have two pistons, not just one. I'm just going to use one of our old brake pads here. Put the clamp in the middle. And squeeze. And the slide goes in.
and uh, both bolts tightened up. All right, so torque specs. These bolts on the front are 48 foot-pounds. The ones on the rear are 22. Fairly snug, just snug on the back and snug plus a good extra little oomph on the front. Um, if you don't have a torque wrench, but I have, I do have one, so I'll go ahead and grab that and make sure that they are too spec. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and get the other side done as well. And then um, we, before we're good to go, we have to take it out of brake maintenance mode, which let me get the other side wrapped up and then we'll take care of that. All right, so now we're going to, we're still in brake maintenance mode. We want to come out of it. So I got the ignition on. I'm going to press and hold down the accelerator. And now I'm going to pull on the brake. Then I'm going to press and hold down the brake pedal for two seconds. Two. And then turn power off. And power back on. And you can hear a whole bunch of sounds going on. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of noises and sounds. You could hear the brakes out there cycling. Before I had no brake pedal, now I have a brake pedal back. So we can go ahead. Start the car like normal now. And we should be good to drive. Now, uh, the brake pads themselves have a break-in period that they recommend. And it's uh, five aggressive breakings from 40 to 10, like back to back, get up to 40, slow down to 10 uh, as fast as possible. And then do that uh, five times. Then do five less aggressive, like from 35 to five miles an hour, uh, not as aggressively. And then just drive for like five minutes after that with using the brake as little as possible um, to break it in. Then once the brakes have cooled down to normal temperature, uh, they've they, everything should kind of be baked in and good to go. So I'm gonna go for a quick drive, do that, and see how everything feels. All right, so yeah, just went for a quick drive. Everything seems fine. No big noticeable difference uh, other than no noise. So that's always a good thing. So it's nice and quiet, braking. Uh, I'll give it some time to see if those sounds come back. It could just be because I was in there and had everything kind of cleaned up. But um, yeah, nice. Bit comp get a bit more confident in the brakes knowing that the there's new pads in there, but they are the extreme pads. Um, I'll put the part numbers for these in there. I said so these are from Power Stop. The, these are the extreme, the seven of uh, the Z36. They have regular, like regular OEM spec pads and um, others too. I've never had any issues with the uh, with the power stop, so uh, and like I said, the the Z36 or the extreme ones are for heavy duty, for trucks towing, or off road use or anything like that. So I figure that would be a good fit for the Bronco. But I'll put those links or the part numbers down in the description if you want to check them out. I also pr write out the instructions for putting the for putting your Bronco into brake maintenance mode and taking it out. So I know it's hard to follow along with the video sometimes and it may be easier to just see them written out um, if you're gonna follow them. But yeah, make sure you're using the brake maintenance mode, especially if you're doing the rear brakes. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know that you liked it. 
If there's something you didn't like about the video, let me know down in the comments. I do appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I hope to see you next time.